virtually all farming activity in Ireland is undertaken by family farms. So it's absolutely central to agriculture in Ireland. They're one of the absolute core communities of, of, of Irish society and I don't think you can understand Irish politics, I don't think you can understand Irish society without understanding a, that the family farm and its impact goes well beyond those who fill in farmer on the census. Uh, you know, I, th I think it's much more deep-seated than that. When you think, you know, to have a kind of profitable and good agricultural sector, you need people who understand nitrogen, who understand uh, breeds of cattle and strains of crops. So you, you have all the scientific knowledge you need. But if, if you look at most of Western Europe, who farms, who's doing it? And it's, it's a family. It's a really complicated dynamic how it works because there is that kind of push-pull factor and, and how people feel that sense of responsibility to the farm and I think it's, it's not just like the successor or son that feels that responsibility, it's also young people who, who won't inherit, they also have that responsibility because if they turned around and started agitating for a piece of the land to be sold because they wanted to fund their own futures then that's kind of a massive impact so kind of that succession dynamic requires all members of the family on some level to be involved in that decision. To sell up is the idea of like it's almost selling part of yourself and part of your identity so it's, it's not something I think you can kind of look at it in sort of economically rational terms. Now men and women talk about passing on the poison chalice because whoever inherits the farm will often need off-farm income or sometimes women will say oh you know he's marrying a primary school teacher. Siblings don't really challenge it so much. You know, nobody's saying, people recognise that the farm won't be viable if it's not intact. So, so people are, are happy to support the continuation of that pattern. Only about 1% of farms change hands to the marketplace each year in Ireland. There is, there is more renting of land taking place, um, which you know, has freed up the opportunity for uh, people with little land or small amounts of land to get involved in, in, in farming. It's interesting over the last 20 years, 30 years, the balance between what we define as urban and rural in the census is 60-40. It hasn't changed, which suggests rural renewal is going on. I think, you know, we've been talking about the demise of the family farm for over 100 years. I think it's pretty resilient. The family farm has been shown to be very adaptive virtually every country in the world. Um, there will be fewer farms. I mean, the, the process of consolidation will continue and there will be larger farms. But for those that stay in the business, I think they will be, they will continue to be resilient to, you know, to change. What's really key for, for society, and especially rural society, and by extension, rural economies, is that having farming families uh, maintaining them, sustaining them, supporting them in some of the most remote, less accessible rural areas. It's, it's about keeping literally the community alive. Visitors to Ireland, and visitors to the countryside talk about the beautiful landscape and all of those hedges and so on were planted by guys 150 years ago and uh, they're maintained but if the family farm is threatened and if it goes into decline there's going to be significant landscape repercussions and that's why it's important that the EU or the government or the state continue to support environmental policies that, that help the farmers to maintain this landscape. The family farm does have a place in modern society because it has modernised and part of the resilience strategies employed by family farms is to adapt and to change, not to always remain resistant but to certainly change.